Hi, this is Justin Patton from the Murray State University Recording Studio, and this is the third installment of our Summer Recording Workshop series. We've talked about microphones and the different types, how to use them for, for what sounds and flavors. We've talked about mic preamps, how to amplify the signal. We've talked about audio interfaces, how to get the signal into a digital audio workstation to digitize it so you can use your computer to edit the audio. Well, we're actually going to get into the real world a little bit today and talk about recording a real concert, like a choir concert or a band concert or even the local rock and roll concert downtown if you just want to do a nice live recording. We're going to talk about a stereo recording which requires two microphones. And if you think about it, you know, the typical sound system has a left and a right system, a left and a right speaker. And so a stereo recording has slightly different information on the left side as the right side. Uh, that's what gives it a larger image as opposed to just the exactly the same thing coming out of both speakers. So we have a left and a right. And for my purposes, we're going to call this left and this right. You can think about a speaker, a big speaker here. And this information is going to be, some of it's going to be similar, some of it's going to overlap, but a lot of it's going to be different. There are a lot of different ways to approach setting up your left and right sound stage. First of all, let's talk about using the basic unidirectional microphone. A unidirectional microphone, which I'm going to represent as an arrow, this picks up sound wherever you point it at. It rejects the sound from wherever it's not pointed. So you're not going to get uh, an, an intentional sound picked up from back here or from the sides, but only from the front. One of my favorite techniques with unidirectional mics to achieve stereo is uh, called the NOS technique. And it involves setting up two unidirectional microphones at a 90 degree angle. So this angle here is 90 degrees. And then the capsules of the microphones right here and right here, these are at about 15 centimeters. And so these are picking up the sound sources from this side and from this side and then a little bit of overlap in the middle. We've done this already. Uh, I've set this up in front of a wind band, and I want you to just to listen to what this stereo pair sounds like right behind the conductor in front of a wind band. Another type of microphone is the omnidirectional microphone. And whereas we drew a unidirectional microphone with an arrow pointing in the direction that we wanted to pick up the sound, the omnidirectional microphone can be designated by a circle because it's going to pick up the sound from everywhere. It really doesn't have a direction to point per se. Uh, it's just going to pick up all the ambience all around. And so usually these type of mics are used as outriggers. That means that if you already have a primary pair, you might set these mics up far out to the left and far out to the right, which is what we did as well. So here's our band on the stage, and right here is our conductor, and that's our NOS arrangement. NOS. Then we're going to add in at about six feet to either side our Omni mics. And these are another pair by themselves. They're much wider, and they are panned left and right as well. But they're going to get a lot more ambience because they're listening from all over the place, 360 degrees, not rejecting the back of the room. And then finally, maybe about 20 feet this way, we have a third pair of left and right mics. And these are our ambience 
which are pointing away from the band. They're just trying to pick up the sound of the hall. We can play with the balance on all three of these in order to try to get uh, the overall image that we want. This first pair, the uh, NOS pair, is not going to be a very wide sound. It's going to sound fairly narrow. The next pair by itself will sound very wide, and then the ambient pair by itself will sound pretty indistinct. Uh, as we blend all of these together, we get a lot of great different flavors and you have to use your own ears and your own judgment and hopefully the conductor can come in and kind of get an idea of whether you're emphasizing what he wants emphasized or whether there's a way that you can get there using your different options. We're going to listen to all this one more time as I leave you. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy the sound of the MSU Wind Ensemble and the different mic techniques that we use to get this recording. Thanks.